Victoria here today and I'm super excited. I thought it would be fun to do a little Q&A on my YouTube channel. So here we are, Q&A. I posted on social media and asked for questions and lots of you guys responded. Plus I've kind of been collecting questions that I get a lot from subscribers and followers and all of you lovely people. Let's get started. So the first question that I get a lot on my channel, well it's kind of like a combination of questions. A lot I get questions about my glue gun. Um, why do I use it? Does it work? Do I burn myself? What kind of glue gun is it? Does it cause those crazy strings? I get a lot of questions about this glue gun. So um, first things first, I love my glue gun. I have like 12 of these, I'm not, I'm not even lying. The reason I love it is it's cheap, easy, quick, adhesive, everything sticks down. Mostly like unless you're gluing plastic on top of plastic, it works so well. As far as I know from what I found online, it is archivally safe. Um, don't quote me, but I think it's archivally safe. On that note though, I don't really care about archivally safe. I know that that's like a crazy big no-no in the scrapbooking world, but I just, you know, I create projects because I love creation, I love making things, and if it doesn't last 50 years, like, that's okay. Like, to be honest, like, that's not why I'm doing it. Okay, do I burn myself? Yes, I do burn myself. That is a hazard of the scrapbooking industry if you're going to use a hot glue gun. To be honest, I rarely burn myself, like maybe once every couple months, and it's usually not that bad. Um, I'm pretty careful. Um, also, I kind of think I've developed calluses, which help me from not being burned. Do I get crazy strings? Yes. Look, here's a layout, which I'm posting this week. If you get crazy strings, you can kind of just work it in a circle and they'll come off. If they don't come off like that, grab your heat gun, heat up those glue strings, spider strings, whatever you like to call them, and they'll disappear. So that's the glue gun mystery solved. Oh, somebody wanted to know what kind of glue gun this is. Um, there's no brand name on it. I got this at Walmart. It's just a cheap old hot glue gun. It's nothing special, but it gets quite hot. Somebody said that their hot glue gun is always like, um, what do you call it? leaking or spilling? I have, if you guys have been watching my process videos for a while, I have this like ceramic plate that I sit it on, and that plate is covered with hot glue strings and stuff, and I don't even mind, so that works well for that. Okay, my next question is from Jen Moore, who wants to know, does your family and friends support what you do? Um, do any of them subscribe to your YouTube channel? Yes and no. To be honest, um, I don't really feel like they support me. Um, usually if I'm taking a lot of photos, they complain. Um, so I have to be kind of like stealth about taking photos. Um, at first, like especially when I first started scrapbooking, I heard a lot of like, oh, what a waste of money, or I can't believe you're spending your money on that. Um, my brother likes to call my scrapbooking crapbooking, which kind of sucks. I don't know, I have a lot of friends who don't understand it because they're not really artistic, so they kind of just... It's like this part of my life that they don't get, that they don't talk about, that they don't really talk to me about, so it's it's not super supportive. Also, I would say I never get anyone to look at my scrapbooks. So, no. They're, my family and friends aren't really supportive in terms of that. They are supportive, however, in terms of my YouTube channel. So, while they're not supportive of the scrapbooking, or the creating part, they are supportive of my YouTube channel in terms of they all think it's like super cool that I have a YouTube channel. They think it's like amazing that I have over 5,000 followers. They're asking me all the time like how many followers do you have. They think it's really cool. They tell people like 
I often catch my mom or dad being like, did you know she has a YouTube channel with 5,000 followers? Like, it's almost like mind-boggling to them, and they don't really believe it. Um, when I had like a thousand followers, they were like, wow, that's a lot of people. You're not going to get more than that. And then as it continued to grow, they were kind of shocked. Um, I would love, like this is just like inside Tory time. That's like my dream to have 10,000 followers. Um, and to be honest, I don't think anyone in my family really thinks that I could ever do that. I think they'd be really supportive if I did. But I don't think they think that there's 10,000 scrapbookers out there, which there are. Like, this is an awesome community worldwide, and there is, like, thousands and millions of you out there who love creating and scrapbooking. But I don't think my family thinks that. So, the other part of Jen's question was, do any of them subscribe? Yes, I would say probably all of them subscribe because they think it's really cool to be like one of the 5,000 people. Although I would say they subscribe but they don't necessarily watch. Like my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, they're all subscribers. But they very rarely actually watch the videos. Um, I would say even my friends, like I have a couple who subscribe but they rarely ever watch. Um, I would say like the only people that I have in my life who are like actually super supportive and watch a lot of my videos are um, my good friend Nora and her daughter Lily, which I've talked about on the channel before. Um, they definitely watch. Now, if you're one of my friends and family watching this, like I just want you to know that I love you, but it's okay that you don't watch. Like the truth is they don't scrapbook, so they're not really interested. Okay, thanks Jen for the question. Allison wants to know, how do I film, edit videos with fast forward, voiceovers, etc. So it's kind of like, I'll give you the quick version of how I film and edit. First I'll talk about how I film my videos. So everything I do is done here at my awesome desk here. It's like a little kid's desk, but it's perfect because it has the shelves and then the table here. Um, all of my videos are filmed right here on the desk. I have this like super cheap tripod. It's a Gorilla Pod. I got it for Christmas like a few years ago. Um, and it's like super bendy and cheap. And I literally stick this tripod with my cell phone. I use my iPhone for all my filming. Um, above my desk like this, filming downwards um, to my desk. Like it's like the least tech savvy like process ever. How do I edit my videos? Well, I edit all of my movies on my computer, my laptop, here my MacBook, and I edit all of them using iMovie because it's fairly easy and it actually came with my computer which worked really well. There are tons of online videos that you can watch that show you how to use iMovie. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like a more detailed description about like how I use iMovie and how I edit and stuff like that. But I film with my like low-tech Gorilla Pod tripod and I edit using iMovie and then just upload it. Next question comes from Debra who wants to know what inspires me? So the first thing that I find so inspiring is Pinterest. I could spend hours on Pinterest. Do check out my Pinterest. I'll, I'll try to remember to leave a link below. And some of the things that I pin often which I find really inspiring are quilts. I love looking at quilts for inspiration, especially for my Scrap Your Scraps videos. I love um, quilts. I also pin a lot of layouts by Paige Evans because she's like my like, oh, I love Paige. I don't know, like ideas sometimes just come to me too. So for example, this layout that I showed you earlier, I'm, I'm going to post a process video about this. Um, I was over at a friend's house and we were making these wreaths. We were like folding paper and gluing it to this circle. And then when I was looking at the photo, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I did something similar on the layout? So then. I fold the paper and put it on the layout. So sometimes it's things like from the photo that inspire it. It's like the mood or the feeling. Um, if 
you're part of my Scrap Your Scraps Facebook group, woo -woo, I love those girls, um, I've been trying to post monthly mood boards to give some inspiration to, so sometimes it's color. That Jessica um, wants to know how do I get myself out of a creative slump. I think no matter who you are, whether you have like a hundred followers on YouTube or five bajillion, or whether you don't even have a YouTube channel, you're just getting started, or you've been doing this for 50 years, you get into that like creative block, creative slump, that feeling of like, I just don't want to create anything. Everything I make is ugly and horrible. Um, so here are my tips for getting out of a creative slump. One, um, create something, anything. Now that may sound like a little weird. You're in a creative slump, so you can't create anything, but I'm telling you to create something. Honestly, create something. Make the ugliest card, the ugliest scrapbooking layout that you can, and sometimes that just like process of like working with your hands, the process of making something actually helps you make something. So I would say definitely just create something, get started, play, and make something. Another way that I get out of a creative slump is by trying to remember the things that excite me about scrapbooking, excite me about creating. Is it, is it project life? Is it scrapbooking? Like maybe I need to get back to the core of the things that really excite me and do those. To be honest, social media really inspires me as well. Um, I love Instagram. I love Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter and all those different like social media outlets. And sometimes when I'm feeling like that creative slump, like I just don't want to create anything, I'll just post a question, like what inspires you, or why are you a YouTuber, or what is the reason that you share your pictures, and sometimes people's comments are the things that inspire me and keep me out of that creative slump. I would say like another way to get out of that slump is to be on social media and talk to people, share honestly how you're feeling, and people will give you feedback. When you read other people's comments, it all inspire you. Um, sometimes if I'm like, I want to do mixed media, but I can't remember like how, which is funny. It's like, I just forget how to make a <laughs> mixed media project. I'll watch one of my old videos and like see how I was doing it and then try to recreate that. And that will also help me get out of a creative slump. So Jackie wants to know how do I keep my space so organized? Um, this is like a lifelong project. For me, keeping my space clean and organized, um, I would say about six months ago everything changed. Before that, I was like super messy all the time, piles and clusters and bags and things everywhere. Read this incredible book, which I know many of you guys have heard about, but I just want to give it a huge plug right now. It's The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up. and. I just want to say if you have not read that book, you need to go get it and read it because it truly is life changing, which I know sounds ridiculous. Like when I read the title, I was like, seriously, life changing magic, like really? But um, if you actually follow through and things that the book says, like it actually really helps. And so I did that and it really helped me like figure out what kind of things I want in my space, what kind of things are like taking up space that I don't want. So um, how do I stay organized? I like, I follow what's in that book, so decluttering and getting rid of things. Um, I try to give away things all the time. So I'll just like get a box and fill it with stuff that I don't want and give it away. Um, I also try to tidy up like every night or after each project. So, like, okay, I think one more question for today's Q&A. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to everybody's questions. I want to do a weekly q and I think, if I have enough questions or until I run out. Um, but one more question for today from Teresa who wants to know, how old was I when I started scrapbooking and what made you start? I am 27, I don't know if you knew that, and I started scrapbooking two years ago. So I haven't actually been scrapbooking for a long time. Um, to be honest, what made me start was I got back from a year and a half tour with the African Children's Choir, traveling as a teacher and just like living with these kids and helping them and it was such a great experience. Like I wanted to do something with the thousands of photos that I had and 
at first I thought about just like making one of those like digital photo books but it didn't feel like enough because I wanted to include stories um, and memorabilia that I collected because I'm like a crazy pack rat I collect everything I started looking online for ideas to how to scrapbook large groups of photos and I started seeing projects by like Dear Lizzie and Becky Higgins and Paige Evans and actually like a lot of project lifers and I love the way that they were able to like include a ton of photos on like one page um, so project life is kind of like what got me into scrapbooking and brought me in because I thought oh here's a great way to use all the photos um, but then as I kind of started with project life I wanted to make like full page spreads for those photos that I really loved and that kind of brought me into scrapbooking and things like that so the first photos that I ever scrapbooked were from my tour with the African Children's Choir um, and then after that I just loved it so much that I didn't stop I just kept going so technically I would say I started scrapbooking two years ago when I got back from choir however I do have some memories from being like 12, 13 and doing a little bit of scrapbooking because I've always been artistic. I always loved art and creating and journaling and things like that. And um, I remember when I was 12 or 13 making like maybe four or five scrapbook pages, like actual scrapbook pages and making them the way that I like them, like how I enjoyed doing them. And I actually heard some like really hurtful comments from older women. Um, I heard hurtful comments from older women being like, Well, that's not how you're supposed to do it. Or you have to put more than one photo on the page. Or you have to use archivally safe things. Or you have to use this. Or you have to do that. Or that's not the right way to do it. Or like actually really hurtful things from older ladies. And I was just so discouraged because I was super self-conscious when I was a teenager and a people pleaser. But I wanted to create pages that I enjoyed making and when these like older ladies in my life and it wasn't just one it was like numerous people in different places told me that I was like doing it wrong or not doing it the scrapbooking way um, or wasn't doing it the proper way it was like completely defeated me and deflated my like balloon of happiness with scrapbooking so I stopped like, yeah so I guess technically I started when I was like 12 or 13 but I didn't really do more than like six pages and I still have those scrapbooks so I could show them to you guys sometime but um leave a comment if you want to see those like circa Tori um scrapbook layouts the like five of them okay I think I've filled up my memory card so I know I didn't get to everybody's questions but check back next week for another Q&A with Tori bye guys